Moving now to perhaps what is the most testable item, the International Financial Reporting Standards Framework. At the heart of the framework is the objective, and this is a summarized version of what we saw earlier in the presentation. The objective of the framework is to provide financial information which is useful in making decisions about providing resources to the entity. So when a given company reports its numbers, that information has to be useful to investors, creditors, who are thinking about either buying the bond issued by the company or lending money to the company or buying securities issued by the company. Surrounding the objective are the qualitative characteristics of the framework. From an exam perspective, you need to recognize these six qualitative characteristics for IFRS, relevance, comparability, timeliness, faithful representation, verifiability, and understandability. So learn these six items, and you also need to know a couple of lines about each of these items. Imagine you are a potential investor. Information is relevant if that information could potentially impact the decision that you are going to make. That is the main point related to relevance. A term that you will often hear is materiality. And again, information is material if the absence of that information impacts your decision. So any information that is useful in making a decision can be thought of as material information. According to the framework, the information must be comparable. Comparability allows users to identify and understand similarities and differences of items. Information presented in a consistent manner over time and across entities enables users to make comparisons more easily than information with variations in how similar economic phenomena are represented. Timeliness is obvious. Information needs to be presented in a timely manner. You will notice that financial reports are published within a month or two of the end of a given financial period. If it takes too long to present the financial reports, then the information becomes meaningless in the sense that if information comes out one year after the close of a period, then that information doesn't really help the financial analyst. Faithful representation means that the financial information presented reflects the underlying economic reality. So if the financial reports make the company look better than it actually is, then that means that the information is not being faithfully represented. Verifiability means that the information being presented is easily verifiable. And understandability means that the information can be understood by a reasonably informed business person. You will notice that in financial reports, detailed accounting jargon such as debits and credits are not used. That is because of this characteristic of understandability. Surrounding the qualitative characteristics are the reporting elements. We have performance related reporting elements such as revenue and expenses and financial position related reporting elements such as assets, liabilities, and equity. You also need to recognize the constraints and assumptions associated with the framework. A classic constraint is the cost-benefit consideration. Clearly, if it costs an immense amount of money to create a report that is very beneficial, then there is something wrong with that. So if it costs $20 million to create the financial reports, and the financial reports are extremely beneficial, but clearly that represents a problem. So there has to be an appropriate balance between the cost of financial reporting and the benefit associated with financial reporting. The financial reporting framework has some underlying assumptions. The two major ones that you need to be aware of are accrual basis and going concern. 
We have talked about accrual basis in uh, earlier reading. This simply means that revenue should be recognized regardless of when the cash is received. So if you sell goods and deliver services in a given period and your cash is being received later, you need to recognize revenue in this period. Similarly, if you incur a expense in that period, but the in expense is incurred in terms of your payment in an earlier period, the recognition needs to happen in the period where the expense was incurred. So this is a co-underlying principle or assumption. We also need to make the going concern assumption, which means that we assume that the company will go on forever. The opposite of a going concern assumption would be the assumption that the company will liquidate. If a company is going to liquidate, then obviously reporting would have to be based on the fair value of assets and liabilities. But the standard here or the framework assumes a going concern. Now we will talk about the general requirements for financial statements according to the International Accounting Standards Board. Here are the required financial statements, and we have seen this in earlier readings, the balance sheet, income statement, comprehensive income, changes in owner's equity, the cash flow statement, and then notes are also required. Often statements from earlier comparative periods are also required. Moving now to the structure and content. Classified balance sheet accounting standards require that the balance sheet distinguish between current and non-current assets and non-current and non-current liabilities. Minimum specified information on face. If you look at a balance sheet, you will notice that there is some core information that has to be presented. So cash and cash equivalents has to be presented. Property, plant and equipment has to be presented. So there are certain requirements for what must be presented on the face of the balance sheet. Additional details then are presented in the notes or footnotes. And there again, there are certain minimum requirements for what must be presented in the footnotes. There are also requirements on comparative information. Typically, companies are required to also present information for the previous period. Moving now to the general features. Faithful presentation means that the impact of transactions is faithfully and accurately represented. In other words, the economic impact should come across in the financial reporting. Going concern and accrual basis we talked about in a earlier slide. Materiality and aggregation. As mentioned before, omissions or misstatements of items are material if they could individually or collectively influence the economic decisions that users make on the basis of the financial statements. Furthermore, each material class of similar items should be presented separately. No offsetting. This means that assets and liabilities and income and expenses are not allowed to offset each other unless explicitly permitted by IFRS. So you are not allowed to say that my accounts receivable is 100, my accounts payable is 90, so I am just going to report a net accounts receivable of 10. So that is not allowed. You have to show both the accounts receivable and the accounts payable. Frequency of reporting. Financial statements must be prepared at least annually. Comparative information. Financial statements must include comparative information from the previous period. The comparative information of prior periods is disclosed for all amounts reported in the financial statements unless a specific requirement permits otherwise. And finally, consistency. The presentation and classification of items in the financial statements are usually retained from one period to the 
next. And finally, consistency of presentation as discussed before. This simply means that the information needs to be presented in a consistent manner from year to year. As financial analysts, there might be situations where we have to compare two companies, company A and company B, and company A uses US CAP, while company B uses IFRS for financial reporting. It is therefore important for us to understand the differences between US GAAP and IFRS. Over here, we are just showing some high-level differences. And later, as we go through specific readings, we will discuss these differences in more detail. And also other differences between US GAAP and IFRS will be identified. US GAAP has been developed by FASB. This is a US-based entity, whereas IFRS has been developed by the International Accounting Standards Board, which is an international entity. US GAAP is based on rules, whereas IFRS is more principles based. With respect to inventory valuation, both US GAAP and IFRS allow FIFO and the weighted average method, but only US GAAP allows LIFO, whereas IFRS does not allow the use of LIFO. With respect to extraordinary items under US GAAP, extraordinary items are shown at the bottom of the income statement, whereas under IFRS, extraordinary items are not segregated in the income statement. Coming to development cost, According to US GAAP, development cost is treated as an expense, whereas under IFRS, it can be capitalized, but if certain conditions are satisfied. US GAAP does not allow the reversal of inventory, whereas IFRS does allow it only if certain conditions are met. Analysts should be aware of these differences when comparing financial reports based on different frameworks. As we will see in later readings, when we compare reports that have been prepared using different standards, we need to make adjustments so that the different reports are more comparable. Monitoring developments in financial reporting standards. You need to recognize that reporting standards are evolving rapidly. Analysts need to monitor developments in financial reporting standards and assess their implication for security analysis. A financial analyst can remain aware of developments in financial reporting standards by monitoring three sources. One is new products and transactions. When companies, especially financial institutions, come up with new products or transactions, they obviously need to report those transactions. So the financial reports that are created where these transactions are reported will contain details of how the accounting has happened. Now, very often, if, if they are reporting on new products or transactions, the rules or the principles might not clearly define how the reporting should take place. So the entities or companies which are doing the reporting use their judgment. As a financial analyst, you need to study the footnotes and the discussion to understand what judgment has been used. And then you as an analyst can assess whether that judgment is reasonable or not. You can also track the actions of standard setters and groups representing users of financial statements. The major group here is the CFA Institute. So you can look at what these entities are saying about the financial reporting standards. And finally, you can look at company disclosures regarding critical accounting policies and estimates. This is critical because this is where you will learn exactly what policies a company is using. And when you are comparing multiple companies, you need to read this material carefully because if different companies are using different accounting policies, then clearly the numbers that are being reported cannot simply be compared without your making adjustments. 
So that brings us to the end of the reading. I will summarize what I think are the most important and testable points. First, you need to know the objective of financial reporting very well. The objective is to provide financial information that is useful to investors in making decisions about providing resources to the entity. So this is a short version of the definition which you need to know. You need to recognize the difference between standard setting authorities and regulatory bodies. The major standard setting authorities are FASB in the United States and IASB, which effectively is the standard setting body for most of the rest of the world. Regulatory authorities are country specific. They have the power to regulate, as the name implies, so they can enforce that companies in their jurisdiction follow whatever standard is in place for that country. IOSCO is an umbrella organization of all the major regulatory bodies in the world. IASB publishes the IFRS framework. And this, I think, is one of the most testable items from this reading. You need to understand the objective, which I have stated up here. That is at the core of the framework. Surrounding that framework are six qualitative characteristics that we talked about. Make sure you know those six characteristics and a few lines about each of those characteristics. Reporting elements we've talked several times, so you should be on top of all the reporting elements. You need to recognize the cost-benefit constraint and the two major assumptions. One is the going concern assumption and the other is that we use accrual-based accounting. Comparison of IFRS and US GAAP. At this stage, you simply need to recognize that there are differences between these two frameworks. And as we go through the readings in financial reporting and analysis, we will highlight the major differences which you need to be aware of. Financial reporting standards are evolving very fast and you as an analyst need to be on top of the changes that are taking place. But keep in mind that you need to be on top of the changes from a user perspective, obviously not from a preparer or accountant perspective. As I keep saying, go over the summary. The summary for this reading is particularly good. It is a little hard to go through the entire reading in the curriculum, but I think the summary captures the material very well. And in fact, what I have done in these slides is also captured the most important points in the reading. So my contention is that what you will read in these slides essentially covers 90% of what you might be tested on. Review the learning objectives. The examples are very few, but the few examples that are shown in this reading are very good. So I would encourage you to go over the curriculum examples. As with other readings in FRA, the practice problems are very good. So do all of them very carefully and do them multiple times. But unfortunately, the practice problems are not enough. So try to do practice problems from other sources also. That is it.